Good morning and welcome as we enter our virtual service for this Sunday morning, the 22nd of November. Uh, there are a few announcements that I would like to share with you. The first is that uh, we begin Advent next Sunday on the 29th of November, and we will be sharing part of the, the candle lighting service uh, during our virtual service. And I would invite you to uh, find a candle or get a candle or a series of candles or perhaps even an Advent wreath and, and join us as we light the candles throughout this Advent season. Uh, the second thing I would remind you of is that our uh, annual congregational meeting will be a virtual one on December 13th. It will be uh, immediately following the worship service. And all you have to do is remain on uh, the, the call for it and uh, church members can vote. We will be voting on our uh, next class of elders, and we will be doing the procedural requirement for the state to have a very, very, very short uh, meeting of the corporation to be reminded that there is no business to, to report, but we still need to do that. Uh, so that will be December 13th. And lastly, I, I would tell you at the conclusion of this service, I will be leaving almost immediately uh, because I'm going to head to the church and I'm going to join uh, several folks from, from the church and we're going to be taking uh, meals to our homeless neighbors uh, down in Sutton Park. And we will be doing that uh, not only today, but there will also be a special meal on Thanksgiving Day. And uh, thanks to everybody who helped make that possible. Uh, those are the announcements that I would share with you. And uh, just before Karen played that beautiful prelude, uh, we also heard a, a solo vocalist sing Channel of Your Peace. That is another version of instruments make me an instrument of your peace, the prayer of St. Francis. And we will be incorporating that into our service in various ways, uh, as we also incorporate the prayer of St. Francis into our worship experience in a variety of ways as we go forward. Our session has, has voted to make this a, a prayer of the congregation because of its power and significance and uh, especially in this time of uh, strife and unrest and division in, in our country and our world, uh, the need for these wonderful and powerful words of St. Francis to become a part of our hearts and lives uh, is so very important. And, and our session believes that along with me. And so you will be hearing it and finding it and we will look for uh, creative ways that that you can learn this and and make it a part of your life. Uh, for today, I I will share the the prayer of Saint Francis in the words we have. But you will notice that that the message both that was sung and the message that I I read to you as we affirm our identity in Christ are are really uh, the same words saying are different words saying the same thing. And so I invite you to listen as, as we share the prayer of St. Francis to begin our, our service together today. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is error, truth. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand 
to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Every time I pray that prayer or read that prayer or think about that prayer, I'm reminded how St. Francis got life turned right side up and, and how the values expressed in that prayer align with God's intention for each of us. And, and so I lift that up to you. And now we continue our time of, of worship together with, with a great Thanksgiving hymn. second verse. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning because God is on our side. I invite you to listen to our scripture lesson for Paul knew exactly what those words meant as he shares his, his concluding words uh, to the, the church in Philippi. The, the letter to the Philippians has often been called the letter of joy. And in the fourth chapter, uh, especially the beginning part that I'm going to read to you are, are some of the, the stellar heights of, of his theology. And following these verses, he, he says goodbye to the people there in Philippi, but these verses are, are some of the high points of, of all of Paul's writing. So I invite you to, to hear these again. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen to those words. Last week, I began to share some of, of the, the wit and wisdom that Sandy McKinney sent to me from, uh, oh, he's, he's a, Will Rogers. And, and uh, so I, I continue that. In his humorous way, Will Rogers shared profound and thought-provoking wisdom. And so I, I invite you to listen to the humor and enjoy the humor, but also hear the power of the wisdom of his words. There are three kinds of men, and, and you could add children to this too. The ones who learn by reading, the few who learn by observation, the rest of them have to touch the electric fence and find out for themselves. Good judgment comes from experience, and a lot of that comes from bad judgment. Letting the cat out of the bag is a whole lot easier than trying to put it back in. Well, those, those are some profound bits of wisdom. And on a whole different scale, Paul gives us some profound godly wisdom that, that is anchored in God's intention for our lives. And it has to do with gratitude. The late Bill Gove, who is considered by almost everyone to be the father of professional speaking, was an incredible speaker. He could, he could have you laughing one moment and crying the next and laughing the next after that. He considered gratitude to be the queen of all emotions. And by that he meant it was the gateway to the profound emotions that bring us joy and peace and love. And indeed, that is true. It's amazing what power gratitude has. It opens our hearts in a way that other things cannot. Just, just take a moment and, and recall a time you were grateful. And I'm almost sure you'll, you'll associate that with either some joy or, or a sense of love and admiration or a sense of peace or, or a deep sense of acceptance. That's what gratitude can do. It brings us nearer and nearer to the heart of God. Now, there are those times that, that gratitude just flows out of us. It is, it's almost instantaneous. We have little, if anything, to do with it. We experience something and, and our hearts are filled with gratitude. Sometimes it's because a person has given us a word of encouragement or an expression of love and acceptance. Or somebody has has said to us that an idea was a good idea. Or perhaps it comes when somebody has simply thanked us for doing something. There are so many ways that, that gratitude can just bubble up and, and overflow in, in our lives when special things happen. Our, our son, Kevin, who many of you uh, know, celebrated his 43rd birthday this past Friday. It's hard for me to believe that it was 43 years ago that, that he came into our lives. But, but what I'm, why I'm telling you this is that he planned and, and took our, our young grandson, John, 
the other John Folkrod in this world. He took John to on a camp out, just, just he and John on Friday night, and they were going to gather around a, a campfire. And, and I was thinking about that. And one of the things I shared with Kevin is what, when John is 70, in his 70s like I am, he will think back on that day and remember it with fondness. And, and as I was sharing that with Kevin, it, it took me back to a time where my father took me on, on a vacation, just him and me. Uh, we went to, to Maine together for two weeks and it was a, a glorious time. And as Kevin was sharing, sharing that experience with me, that, that memory bubbled up and, and I, I was overcome with a sense of deep and profound gratitude and joy and, and a sense of the loving connection I shared with my father. I didn't do anything to help that happen. And there are plenty of times in, in our lives when, when gratitude does that. It just overcomes us. This, this past week, uh, the people who we work with with all our air conditioning, R&R, uh, &R, heating and cooling, Dean and, and uh, Rich Nicoletti, uh, make it a practice to take Thanksgiving meals to, to the families at Manatee Elementary School. And they took 20 this year there on, on Wednesday. And, and I can imagine because some of the staff members have already expressed their gratitude to me that, that the process of experiencing that brought up tremendous gratitude in the hearts and minds and lives of people and, and reminded some people how richly they were loved and, and just being able to talk about that with, with Rich and Dee, uh, I know the sense of joy they experienced in that and how that's all connected with gratitude. And there are times that we don't have to do a thing. Gratitude just comes upon us. It is as if God pierces our lives and, and gives us an incredible gift, and we're grateful. And then there are other times when, when in the course of, of remembering things, that that we become grateful and gratitude comes to us now now sometimes uh that's associated with special memories we reflect back on a time that was especially joyous or special like like the the moment i was sharing with you of, about my time with my dad uh other other times we think of moments that that just warm our hearts, special moments. Uh, I was thinking this week how one time uh, in the past couple of weeks, our, our son Jeff uh, drove out of his way on a very warm morning as I was walking to, to just share words of encouragement with me uh, during the, the time I was sweating like crazy. And, and what a gift that was. And, and remembering that fills my spirit with a sense of gratitude. There are those times of, of memory as well, but there are also times when time and distance and perhaps wisdom and experience help us see some moments from the past that we thought were devastating. And we look back on them now and we are thankful for the direction they turned our lives to go in. Perhaps it was something like, like knowing that you got a premonition to, to wait before heading out in the car and, and you discovered that uh, even though you were going to be late to something you you avoided an accident that would have had you right in the middle of it if you had gotten out on the time you wanted. Or perhaps it was a, a, a job that you were looking forward to and, and it didn't come to pass and you ended up finding a job that you liked better or you discovered things in your job at the time that brought you a deeper sense of 
joy and reward, or you discovered that the job you were about to take would have been a huge mistake. There are those times, I think in my own life, uh, about my call into the ministry that I've shared a little bit with you. Uh, I took a job as a shift foreman in a stainless steel tube mill. It's one of two jobs in my life that I can say only two that I profoundly disliked. I used to sit in my car uh, and, and wait till the last minute to, to go in into work because I disliked it so. To give you an idea how much I disliked it, I, I was going to speak to a church uh, in my third year of seminary. I'd been gone from that job for two and a half years and I found myself driving over a bridge that went over a road that I took to work. And as I was going over the bridge without even thinking my stomach turned into knots, that's how much I I had disdain and dislike for that job. But that was also, as I look back on it, an incredibly rich time where the church became something very special to send in me. And people came into our lives that have had an impact on me for over 40 years. I think of Charlie and Lillian McLaughlin, a couple in their 70s who when Sin and I were in my, our mid-20s, we thought were pretty old. We don't think that way anymore. But their love and witness and experience and, and taking us under their wing was an incredible gift. And Paul Dissington, the pastor of that church, who shared his story with me and I was able to connect and, and match up mine and understood that I, I was having a legitimate call into the ministry because he had. And then there was Don Welsh, the, the uh, head of admissions in the seminary where I was going to, whose, whose story was also like mine. And those confirmations and the many other people who came into our lives and in the midst of all the discord at work, God's hand was firmly on my shoulder and in our lives and moving us in another direction. And as I look back on it now, I feel a tremendous sense of gratitude. And I'm sure you have ways and experiences in your life that as you look back on them, you too will experience gratitude. It just takes a, a bit of reflection. It takes slowing down enough to remember them and to ponder them and to lift them up and, and let God's presence flow through them into your life and you will be filled with gratitude. And as you are filled with gratitude, that sense of love and joy and peace will be opened up to you. That's what gratitude does. There are the times it, it simply overtakes us, overwhelms us as a gift. There are the times we think about it in reflection, both on on wonderful memories and, and on times when at the moment we thought all was going in the wrong direction. But there are also those times where life is, is incredibly painful and difficult. And, and to take the saying, it's hard to remember your mission was to drain the swamp when you're up to your ears and alligators. There are moments like that in life. And gratitude seems like it's light years away. Pain and heartache. And despair, perhaps, seem right at our doorstep. What do we do then? Paul gives us an incredible key for what to do then. Not only does he say lift everything up in prayer and supplication, but he also says these words. I, I want you to, to hear them again. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, 
whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. When we're in the midst of a time that's incredibly painful and hurtful, we have a tremendous God-given power. And that's what we choose to think about. It is heartbreaking to me. When people choose to focus and focus and refocus on things that bring them pain and frustration and heartache, and they get stuck in a cycle of that, and that's all they can see. Because there is a way out. What we think about is so powerful, and that can be a choice that we make. Is it easy? Oftentimes, no. But, but if we start learning how to think about what's pure, what's honorable, what's just, what's true, what's pure, what's pleasing, it's amazing the power that will be given to us to unleash the gift of gratitude. I want to share two examples. We were, we were undergoing a, a, a major building campaign in the church in Stowe, and, and there is nothing quite as unnerving to people as, as undergoing a brick and mortar building campaign. If there's anything that says in all bold letters, change is on the way, uh, build a building. And, and one of the uh, lifetime charter members came into my office as, as things were really taking shape and, and the changes were coming about. And she sat down in despair and through her tears, she said, John, too much is changing. I, I don't know if this is my church anymore. I don't know what to do. And I just let her keep talking. And she cried and talked and, and I just sat there. And the most amazing thing happened as, as she talked through that, she began to think in other ways. And it was like a light bulb went off and she said, you know what? I have wonderful memories of this church. I don't have to leave. I can, I can start thinking about those and I can think about all the positive things that will come to this church because of these changes. I can think about these things. And she got up and she said, Thank you, John, for such wonderful advice. I didn't say a word. But she started herself thinking about those good things. And <coughs> sometimes we have to think about the negative in order to come to the positive. And sometimes we just have to set the negative aside and say, you know what, I'm going to keep thinking about the positive, and sometimes we need to ask God to help us think about those things. However we come to it, it is Paul's secret, his obvious secret about how to come to gratitude in the midst of difficult things in life. And my goodness, all you have to do is, is pay the slightest bit of attention to the news and there is plenty of stuff to break your heart, to leave you with a sense of repulsion and disgust. I think of some of the stories I've read in, in the news this past week and my heart is literally broken. And if those are the only things we focus on, we will fall deep in the pit of despair in the frustration and bitterness and resentment. 
and we will start blaming others for what's going on in our lives. And our listening will become more and more selective and we will get caught in, in the trap of our own negative thinking. And now the, the second example I want to share with you in, in conclusion for this service. When Cindy and I were in San Antonio and I was in the Air Force, we found a wonderful church, Laurel Heights United Methodist Church. And the senior pastor there was Dr. Daryl Gray, a tremendous person. And we were part of a young adult class who, who used to get into the church late and sit in the balcony. And, and I want to tell you two things that, that I tremendously remember as if they just happened yesterday. Uh, one is I would sit in the balcony and, and during a sermon from time to time, I would think to myself, man, why does anybody do this week after week? Well, you can see uh, how much I knew at that time as a uh, 22, 23-year-old young man. My brain hadn't fully developed yet, uh, so you can give me a little pass with that. But the other thing that I do remember that's of far more consequence is Daryl Gray was a powerful preacher, and he lost a son to cancer. And I remember one day in a sermon, him sharing the agony of that. But what I remember even more than the agony is what he shared beyond that. And this is what he shared. That in the midst of that terrible, terrible loss of a son he deeply, deeply loved. God came to him and the truth and the power and the reality of Easter and the resurrection came alive in his life as it had never been before. He had believed it before, but now he believed it with a different level of conviction, a, a level not just of hope, but of utter certainty. And his whole thinking process changed. And of course, he felt the loss for his son. But he also said he experienced the deep gratitude and joy of knowing that his son was alive and their separation was only temporary. You see, there are times in our lives when we hurt. We can even be bitter or resentful. But if we will follow Paul's wisdom and start thinking about the things that are true and pure and sources of joy and honorable. And we come back to this ninth verse of Philippians 4 and read that list over and over again, or print it on a card and keep it in our wallets or, or on the fridge so whenever it comes, we look at it. We will discover the incredible power of changing our thoughts. And as we change our thoughts, not only will we experience gratitude, but we will experience its gifts of love and peace and joy. And very, very likely, the real and powerful presence of God's Spirit in our lives. Amen, and so be it. I invite you to now continue your time of worship by listening to our special music.
you join me in the spirit of prayer. Almighty God, we come before you and we praise you for your constant faithfulness, your, your presence with us even when we don't recognize it or know it, for your commitment to us and the fact that we have won the battle even before it begins. And no matter what the present outlook might be, you have, have claimed us for all of eternity. And that what you desire for us is in fact the last word. And nothing that we can experience in life will, will ever overcome that. And for this, we praise you and thank you that you claim each of us as if we were the only person in all of the universe, your precious child. And in our prayers, we, we lift before you the, the tremendous strife and division and mistrust within our country where truth and lies seem to converge, where people have stopped seeing other people but instead see labels where we have grown distant. And we pray in the midst of this pandemic that, that seems to be totally out of control, that is not only dangerous to, to our population, but dangerous, dangerous to those heroes of doctors and nurses and first responders and and hospital staffs who are putting their lives on the line each and every single day, not just in terms of, of this virus, but, but pushing the limits of their human capacity. And so we ask that, that you will give them extra strength and courage and the encouragement to take care of themselves as well. For in many ways, they are our most precious resource. And help us as a country get beyond all the things and excuses and, and reasons we can come up with not to wear masks or, or socially distanced or wash and practice habits of cleanliness, we ask that you will touch every heart and take this out of the realm of, of politics and help us see how it is, is it, it is a way we can express our love for one another and how it is not a matter of what party we are, but really it is a matter of our witness for Christ. Help us be a part of that witness and let that witness grow like a wildfire through our country. We give you thanks for the news of vaccines on, on the horizon and are thankful for all the efforts and support that have gone into making that possible, but help us to, to not be careless in the meantime until we receive the benefits of that vaccine. Be with our leaders at, at every stage of, of government from the most local to the, to the national, to the international, and of course at the states. 
touch them, all of them, regardless of, of, of their religious outlooks, touch them with the, the spirit of Christ. And give them wisdom and courage. We lift up these and all our prayers in the name and spirit of Jesus the Christ. And as his people, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is another wonderful Thanksgiving hymn. Before we have our, our benediction, I want to wish everybody a blessed, safe Thanksgiving, and I will look forward to seeing you all next Sunday as we begin the Advent season. Uh, I, I'm still trying to figure out that it's not September, but we're getting ready to begin the Advent season. And, and so let us uh, move to our benediction. We go nowhere by accident. Wherever we go, God is sending us. Wherever we are, God has put us there. God has a purpose in our being there. Christ who dwells within us has something he wants to do through us where we are. And now as we go forth into this new week, I invite you to believe this and to go in the joy of God's grace, the joy of God's power, and the joy of God's love, so be it.
Blessed Thanksgiving, all.